Hello friends, and today I'd like to share an edited section from a recent live stream, which followed a question on one of my early videos from Samin Khan, who asked, can you please explain how can I add texture in perspective style? Because when I try to make a sidewall and add texture, it doesn't work. So I took some time during the stream to run through a few options. And these streams I try to run weekly, but the day and time can vary, so please do hit that bell so that you're notified when I'm due to go live. And if you have a question that you'd like me to answer about OpenTunes or to Homer, then please do come and join me on the streams, or join me on my Discord server and ask over there. And we'll try to answer it over there, or during a future live stream. So get your questions in. So without any further yakking, let's watch the stream. So let me start a brand new project here. It can go in my to home folder and I'll call this um, texture in perspective. I'll discard my changes on the kitchen because I've not made any changes that I want to keep. And call the scene name test. Ordinarily I'd suggest that you don't do, but because I'm only creating one scene in this, the project name uh, covers what I'm trying to say. Okay, so we're talking about textures in perspective. So I was thinking about how to do this and demonstrate this uh, yesterday when I saw the question. And I think what I'll do is I've created a smart raster level, and then I will choose the uh, texture tab on the palette. I'll add a new color and then choose a texture. And really for demonstration purposes, we need a texture that has straight lines in it. So the brickwork or one of these straight wooden lines, I quite like the idea of the checkerboard pattern because then you clearly see the direction um, of the texture to show perspective, hopefully. So I use the fill bucket tool and I'll fill the whole screen. Turn off frame range. Uh, every time, it's worth saying by the way, every time you start a new session with Opatoons Auto Homer, I do recommend that you uh, check the options toolbar when you take when you first start a new tool. When you first go to draw something with a brush tool, have a look over the values, make sure they're correct and they're suitable for what you're trying to do. So fill bucket tool. I was last doing some frame range tests, so I'll turn that off. Uh, the fill depth is fine. I'm filling with areas and I'm using the normal fill type, which is just clicking on the screen. So let's just save that. So although I've painted with a texture, you can't see it until you preview by pressing the preview button, and then you can see the texture. It's a very strange way of working and one you might not think of doing when you first work with textures, but it's just something to get used to. So you can turn that on and off to, to change how, uh, it's, how it's shown and how you work with it. My first thought with this, we'll go to the FX room, as Soda Pop said, I believe, is to use the uh, perspective, um, the perspective FX node. So I'm in the FX schematic, as you can see at the top here. I'll actually lock the rooms so I don't accidentally move any of my panels. And you can see the FX button at the bottom here, so you know you're in the FX schematic. If you're not sure, press the button at the bottom right, and it changes between the stage schematic and the FX schematic. So just get the one with the FX button. You can either right click on the column node and choose insert effects, or if you select the column node, you can press the FX button to bring up this pop up. So you can then start typing into the box, which is a great way to find an effect that you know the name of but don't know which category it's within. So the perspective distort, start off with that one, and I'll insert that. And if I do turn on the preview, uh, you immediately see the effect it has for creating an, uh, a perspective effect over that texture. And by using the square checkerboard, you can clearly see it's like having a tiled floor going off into the distance. So you've got a couple of widgets you can change. If I double click on this, you can see the options you can change here, but you can change them by typing numbers into the boxes or by clicking the widgets. 
But at the very center, we've got the vanishing point. So this is the point where all the, uh, the squares on the grid are pointing towards or drawn towards. So if I click and drag that down a little bit, you'll see how the perspective at the sides, at the edges, goes wider to point towards that vanishing point. That's like you're nearer to the ground. Or if I bring it up, it's like you're higher up looking down on more of the floor. So position is to where you think is, is relevant. And at the bottom here, we've got the anchor point. And that just shows, as you can see, where to start drawing um, the edge, almost the horizon line for your uh, drawing there. Because I was hoping that we could use this effect um, by rotating it to have the tiles on the wall at the right hand side. Because the original question was asking about a, a side wall to add texture to it. So if you use the brickwork effect. But if you rotate it by using the animate tool, rotation option, as you rotate, the more you rotate off the base, the texture seems to rotate that way as well. I want it to rotate around the center axis if it could, but it's rotating the texture across its kind of X axis as you move around. So that doesn't work for creating a wall effect, but it is good for creating a floor or ceiling. So at zero degree rotation, that's the floor. And if you put in 180 degrees to the animate tool, it can give you the ceiling. Perfect. As soon as you go to 90 degrees, it disappears because the texture is side on in effect. So there's a couple of ways you can handle this. One, which is the easiest way, you could create your effect on the floor, render it out from the render menu, output settings, and render this single frame out as an image. So I'd recommend PNG, but you can use JPEG or TIFF or any other images in the drop down. And now you've got the uh, texture rendered out as an image, you can import it and just rotate that on the sides. So that's the first way. So I'll place that up there and let's just delete the connection. So we've got the standard texture flat on the screen. And the second effect that I wanted to mention is, I can't remember the, the name of it now. So for this one, I'll right click on the node, insert effects and go to distort and it's the free distort. And again, this has, uh, if I double click it, quite a lot of values you can change and it's, it's quite finicky until you get used to it. But even then you, it's easy to make a mistake. So you've got bilinear and perspective. I've only ever used the perspective options. And what this does, the free distort, it's kind of, it's like the distort where you use the selection button, so this one here. So if I draw a box, and it won't actually distort anything, but it's like this. And it's similar to, you can click the corners to resize the selection. Here we go, you can see this. You can click the corners to resize, but if you hold the Alt key, no, the Control key, you can also distort the corners inwards. To add kind of a perspective view to whatever it is you're looking at. And in fact, if I try and do that, this might be a better thing to try first. If I select the whole thing, which is that square there, and hold the control key, I can bring in these corners. Let's see how that looks. There we go. So that doesn't actually adjust the perspective of the texture, it just paints the texture within that shape. So that doesn't help in this instance. So that's the kind of that's the kind of movement we're after to create that shape. If I undo that, come back to a full screen, there we go. So turn on the preview and you can now use the widgets for this effect. So what we're trying to do is you've based in effect you've got two rectangles on the screen here. 
it's going to be difficult to see up here but when you try it yourself you'll see what it what it is and you map one rectangle onto the original drawing and what you're doing with the second rectangle is saying where do i want that drawing to go to that's so a little bit like the plastic tool where you create a mesh and then move the mesh so we've got the source location first and then the destination so let's zoom out so i can see everything so i don't know if you can see that on your screen clearly if your screen's large enough but there's a large blue rectangle if you hover over the corners and in terrible bright green writing it tells you the location of the corner so this is top right destination and it's the source i want to move first but both rectangles start in the same place overlaid so it's difficult to grab the right corner so it's something to to have a play with and figure out so we'll move that corner out of the way and if i grab the top left that now moves the whole square of the destination so the source is at the back here you want to place the source where the images that you want to move so place this on the camera because that's the size of that whole image there and on some corners it moves just that one corner and others it moves just the one side so again a bit of experimentation so that's the source we want to say now where do you want to move it to so you want to move the destination square to where you want the destination of that um, that texture oops do the rotation we don't want that for the destination to be the top there the bottom left here and then the corners want to be adjusted and i think again you press either control or alt move one corner at a different position to the other it's very very awkward to get this set up in the right place something like that so it's, it's a peculiar way to to move um, the shape and you can just type numbers in these boxes or as with any of these text boxes you can click and drag on the black line the very thin black line underneath the text box so the source is okay the destination if you want to move the bottom right up a little bit that's the the y-axis I can click and drag under the y box that's the bottom left and then the bottom right that's moved it down so I click and drag to the right and that moves it up a little bit so you can type numbers in or click and drag on there to get the effect you're after but it's just really peculiar to use hopefully I think you'll have seen here how tricky it is to, to manipulate these these corners and how some of them affect other corners and, and others don't. It's, uh, it's something to get used to, but it is something to have a good play with to potentially get the effect that you're after. So there's a couple of effects, the perspective hour and the free distort to uh, put your textures or other drawings within a perspective field. Yeah, part of the reason that it's... Uh, a little bit laggy Tom is that because you're using the, the preview mode you have to be in the preview mode to see the effect of it I mean if you turn preview mode off you can adjust the corners without the lag obviously you can't get to see uh, the effect until you turn preview on so often it's better to leave you just leave the preview on and adjust it and and accept the lag yep absolutely Tom that's another way if we go to the FX room again I'll take that effect out remove the connection there so the column just connects to the scene so we've got the texture here so what you're suggesting is go to the output settings render it out as an image i'll call it checkerboard or just checker so that's an image rendered out now and now if i go to the output for that project i've got a single image so again if i Close that. Let's bring this into view so you can see what I'm doing. 
So here we are, if I go to the 2D room, and then I click and drag that image I've just rendered out into the view. And it'll add that into its own column. So I'll hide the other column. And here now in column two is just the image that we imported that we previously just rendered. And then use the selection tool. The shame you can't just press Control A to select everything, but let's just click and drag. And now if I resize this, I can do so with the preview off. And if I hold the Control key on the corners, I can click and drag that to create the effect I'm after. Like that. You can do it that way as well. Plus, of course, you can reuse this as many times as you like. So that's actually affected the original image. It was quite interesting. Yeah, because it is a PG image that I've brought in that frame. So I've affected that whole image. So I can't reuse that again unless I duplicate it. So you might want to take this image and then uh, duplicate it. And because it's an image, you can't duplicate it directly. Uh, and this is on my list of videos to look into later. Um, you have to use the selection tool to select over that image, press Control C, and on the new frame, uh, or sorry, on the new level, you can then paste it and then reuse it there. But we'll look at that uh, another time. Yeah, it's, it is more friendly, but it's only useful really, as I say, for a single drawing, because as soon as you adjust that image, you've adjusted it. So you want to make sure you've copied it, uh, and then you might want to, now I've copied it, I can now duplicate it if I want to. So I can use the selection tool, highlight it, uh, hold control, bring the corners in for that side. And then on frame two, I can select it all again, because I've got a copy. Go back to frame one. With the selection tool selected, click on the background and press Control V. And now, again, Control on the corners. I can drag this over for a second copy of that in the view. To create the two perspective walls. So I hope that helps uh, you, Samin, um, with your question about using perspective uh, with textures. I've got quite a few different ways of doing so. So whichever works for you is the best way to do it, to be honest. This last method I quite like, but you will need to be careful and, and think carefully about adjusting a single image you've rendered if you want to reuse it. So that's a few different ways to put your textures and other background images into perspective. I hope you found this useful. And for those of you who watched towards the end where I imported the image, I'll have another video next week sharing a few more tips about importing images that I think you'll find useful. So stay tuned for that. And I'll see you on Sunday for another live stream where I'll be doing some more drawing and animating as well as answering your questions. So do subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss when the stream starts. And don't forget to join me over on my Discord to chat with me and other animators about open tunes or anything animation related. So I'll see you back here next Friday with another tutorial. And that's a guarantee.